started. Um, okay. So this is the April 4th meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee. Uh, we have a quorum now. Um, and we also have two people in the waiting room. Um, oh, should well, I actually, say their setup is attendees. So yeah, Kim, if you want to read that statement, that'd okay. be great. Um, pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting of the Transportation Advisory Committee is being conducted via remote participation. Thanks. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, okay, so our first item was the council liaison to TAC. So the council liaisons have been on the council agenda for a number of meetings and they haven't actually gotten to it yet. Um, Jennifer Taub is attending the meeting today. Um, because she is one of the counselors who had volunteered to serve as a TAC liaison. Um, and George Ryan is the other counselor who had volunteered to serve as a TAC liaison. Um, I did talk to Jennifer briefly before the meeting and she said she didn't need to be let in as a panelist, but Jennifer, if you do want it later, you can raise your hand. And we do appreciate TAC having a liaison to the council. Um, and again, nothing's official yet because I think it's on the agenda for the next council meeting. And then um, as I emailed about our main agenda items today. Oh, I missed that. Who is the counselor liaison? Well, Jennifer Taub had volunteered oh. and George Ryan had also volunteered. And it sounded like Jennifer may get assigned because George had also signed up. Oh, let's let Jennifer, can we let Jennifer in please, Guilford? Oops. Oh, hi. I can be um I can be in the audience. I just want to say at Monday's meeting, there is when the council will be deciding who will be the liaison. It will probably be George Ryan, but that okay. will be, yeah. But thank you. So <laughs> I'm here. Hi, everyone. All right. So Andy Steinberg had suggested that Jennifer attend because he thought it would be you, Jennifer, but yeah. Okay. So we thought it would be because you're we referred some items to you. But no, you can zap me into the audience. That's fine. I'll raise my hand or, or zap or okay, bring you sure. back if you need me. I'm All here. Right. And also, we do have public comment. And I know that uh, Kitty is here. Um, we could let her in, too. Um, OK. You running the show here, Guilford? You want Kathy? Like Kathy? Yeah, in? yeah. Let her in. All right. And you can take, Jennifer said she'll sit in the audience either way. Yeah, I'll raise my, or, you know, call me if you need me. <laughs> or you, you can know, just I turn think Once I make you a panelist, I can't really demote you. Oh. Oh, you usually can, but it's okay. It's we'll okay, just, I'll just. You can just turn, turn off your off. mic. Yeah, yeah that's okay. fine. <laughs> Hi. are people. Are you frozen? Oh, you're not yeah. frozen. No, that's the, I, I'm trying to get my, the video thing on. Okay. Okay. This is, we'll do it. And yeah. So, so I didn't know, did you want to make that. public comment today? I do. Okay. So just before you make public comment, um, I did listen to the TSO meeting and I heard that you had made public comment at the TSO meeting about the Heatherstone project. Yes. So the TAC, it was referred to us by TSO. We're not going to be taking like any action or making any recommendations on Heatherstone tonight um, because we felt like it's a pretty, I mean, I heard that there were, I mean, Andy Steinberg had contacted us and told us that there were quite a few comments at the TSO meeting about Heatherstone. You know, there have been discussions with the town, it sounds like for over 10 years about Heatherstone and TAC is just coming to this now. Um, and we, and there is a public forum of some sort being planned to discuss Heatherstone more. So I know that I've reviewed Heatherstone and I have some questions about it, but, um, so just, just in terms of the context for your comments, like we're not going to be taking action. We're just looking for more information. And I, I think we would wait until after there's a public forum to make any recommendations to TSO and the council, similar to what TSO is doing. Oh. Wait, but um, Gilford has a Gilford has his hand up. 
Could you make sure you ask everyone to introduce themselves and tell them? Oh, sure. Thank you. Otherwise, we never get that. All right. I'm sorry about that, Guilford. I just launched into the meeting. So I'm Tracy Zafian. I'm the chair of TAC. Can I'm Kim Kelly. I'm the vice chair of the TAC. I'm Chris Lindstrom, and I um, live on Butterfield Terrace right next to UMass. And I've been on TAC um, a little under two years, but I um, am sort of a liaison with um, the in-town PGOs. And so we are doing uh, the parent guardian organizations at the schools. So we're doing a big Safe Routes to School event. We did one in the fall and we've got one coming up in May. I think we just need to introduce ourselves so Amber has it for the minutes because she's listening. Oh, to sorry. The <laughs> it's okay. I love your bio. It's all good. <laughs> so, so, and I'm Stefan Cheech. I'm a member of the TAC as well. Okay. Thank you. And Joe, if you're here. Hey, everybody. Joe Federuso, TAC. How are you doing? All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. So go ahead, Kitty, if you want to make comments. Yeah. Hi. Um, so I live in Echo Hill South, which is different than Echo Hill North. Heather Stone is in Echo Hill North. So you might always want to be aware of that. Um, and I'm actually opposed to the road, the idea of having rotaries, getting rid of the median and, um, and putting in sidewalks. So just now I came down Heather Stone and there's like, I don't know, I counted one or two descending driveways, which people were complaining about their kids might roll, roll a ball down their descending driveway and get hit by a car. Um, if there are no, you know, if, if, if these rotaries and sidewalks don't get put in, but there's really only one or two descending driveways. I counted about 35 houses altogether in the stretch between Pelham Road and, um, Stony Hill Road, which is the main part of, that is Heather Stone. It's a half a mile long. It's um, one tenth of a mile where the median is. Um, and did I say, and, and about, no, excuse me, not a mile long. It's half a mile long, less than 0 0.5 miles. That's important to correct. Um, now, Stony Hill Road is not in Echo Hill Road. There was a complaint about cars driving fast on Stony Hill Road, but that, and that is a descending road, um, but that's not Echo Hill North and it's not Echo, it's not Heatherstone Road. Uh, someone complained at the other meeting about their kids bicycling to Fort River on Main Street, but that is a very different street than Heatherstone. Main Street is really hard to bike on. I used to bike, um, almost, often um, to my office actually on Main Street. Um, and I would go down Heatherstone. Heatherstone was not the problem. What the problem was Main Street because of poorly maintained sidewalks. Am I running out of time? Is anybody timing me? Okay, well- you have, a, you have a minute or so, so left. left but... like for me to you know, stop. Um, so Main Street or, or Pelham Road there or Amherst Road, whichever one it's called right there has like, mailboxes on the sidewalk it has tree roots really big ones you that you have to go around it's a narrow sidewalk um and it also has um what's the other thing garbage cans it's also really poorly maintained now if people were to bike on stony hill road and that is steep it's a poorly maintained sidewalk um, on belcher town road there and there's a lot of debris on the road and the sidewalk is overhung by a lot of tick bearing bushes um, that are, I've gotten a lot of ticks from that ride. Um, so I don't think that the complaint that Heatherstone Road needs to be changed because of kids biking to Fort River, um, Heatherstone is not the problem. Amherst Road or Palm Road is the problem. Um, also, I counted only one or two actual descending driveways. And it's like most people just, tell, they, they train their kids not to throw the ball down the driveway and run after it. I, I, I can't see how putting in a sidewalk would help that or putting in rotaries for like a half a mile, putting in two rotaries. I want you guys to go there yourselves and really see yourselves. 
you know, is this a problem? Is it not? I know that people were voicing, oh, my parents' generation wanted sidewalks. Now we want sidewalks. But I think that's a minority of people. And there was one older person who said she she doesn't you know, she doesn't want sidewalks and kids biking on sidewalks. It's the roads are wide and a pleasure to walk on. People can walk side by side. And it's really, we have more walkers there than from my perspective, any place else that I know of in Amherst. People love walking there because they can walk on the road, which is already plowed. Nobody has to take the snow and the leaves off of it. The dirt doesn't build up. It's really, it's really great. It's like walking in a park. So I think that is about, uh, well, maybe a speed limit sign. I didn't see a sp any speed limit sign. That would be perhaps a way to calm traffic. Um, it is, I believe, the only people who are going on Heatherstone Road are the people who live in Echo Hill North. Um, most people, it is not a shortcut to the Hampshire Athletic, um, uh, Athletic Club. Who would, who would take, who would go up Main Street and the, north of the club and then go down and then go down and around? People take Route 9. They don't take Main Street and Heatherstone Road unless maybe they're coming from Route 202. Um, so I don't know who they're talking about. Um, if there was a place in this area that needs to be um, fixed and needs a sidewalk, it would be the gatehouse road area between where the school, but where the bus lets out the public bus, PVTA. Um, from there to the condos, there's uh, no sidewalk on the condo side. And I also take the bus a lot and that is dangerous to walk in. Um, and there are potholes going all the way up to Stony Hill Road on gatehouse road. Um, so, okay, so, so thank you. So, hmm? No, thank you. I think you're over three minutes or four minutes or, very much. But, but there will also be this public forum that I know that, um, TSO is organizing. Okay. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Thank That's you. Good. And now, um, Art, Keen, you're in the audience too. I don't know if you're here just as an observer, if you had to, wanted to make any comments, but if you do, please raise your hand. So. Okay, so um, so Kitty, do you want to say? I mean, you can turn off your camera, or you can. Um, we're going to spend a lot of the meeting, I think, talking about Beltraton Road, or we can put you back in the audience. Okay. So Guilford, can we talk about the um, Beltraton Road project? Yes, I actually found the button to put people back. Sorry, Good never job. seen that button before. Well, there you go. So can you I'm happy um, to bring them back if you want them. If people want to come back, they can raise their hands. I mean, we do try to run our TAC meetings like as we did when we had them in person where audience members can talk and aren't stuck out there in attendee land. Um so Guilford, can you give us an overview of the Belchertown project? Yes. Um you didn't actually did Amber actually send the plans out? She did yeah. send them. I didn't get a chance to re look through them fully because I was so also good. Go the ahead. Reason, the reason they weren't given to the council is, is that they're pretty detailed plans and you can't really show them very well on in a big screen, but I'll show you what we have. Um, I mean, I'll tell you the reason that I had asked for the plans is because when I went to the site, I had questions about exactly what the layouts were i mean maybe this is like really in the weeds and people wouldn't have those questions but also like where the crosswalk was intended to be where the bike lanes were intended to be where the space for the bike lanes is going to come from because when i visited the area the bike the like there's a little narrow shoulder like a strip on both sides and it is very narrow like in some places it's only like a foot wide or two feet wide um, which didn't really seem like bike lanes. And I was also concerned about just the interface of like how the bike lanes, you know, interact as your, well, one, the fact that there's no bike lanes on like either end of this strip, which the strip, which was described in the memo is only being 900 feet long. But then also just like if people are, if there is a bike lane created, like what happens when people get past those 900 feet or are on, or, or on College Street or further down on Belchertown Road and, 
how do the bikes like get in and like merge in or, and those kind of details. So that's why I'd ask from the maps. But. Okay. <clears throat> so here are the plans. Everyone can see them, right? Yep. All right. Um, so <clears throat> we're in this little section. So there's a bigger project that goes with this. The bigger project is actually repaving and repairing uh, Belchtown Road all, all the way from Southeast Street to the town line. Um, that project's been being developed slowly over the years, and it hasn't really, it's been slow, moving really slowly. So <clears throat> what's why this one's broken out of the project of the bigger project is because the town is purchasing. If you can see my cursor, yep, they're pur purchasing these three lots here. Mm. They've actually they've already purchased them, um, and these are going to be um, affordable housing. <clears throat> so they put in the town put in for a mass works grant for money to put to upgrade the sidewalks and put in bike lanes from the village center which is to your left here, back to where the affordable housing will be. So that's why the project's so short. There's another project, which is a community development project, which will go from here to the bridge. And then there's another project, which will what go bridge? from the bridge. The Fort River Bridge. Oh, okay. And there's another project, which goes from the Fort River Bridge to the town line now. They've been, it's been chopped up into three pieces. The Fort, just correct me if I'm wrong, the Fort River Bridge is like right before Gatehouse Road. It is. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's like a little overpass. Yeah, I, I Okay. So that's why we have it kind of this little piece. Is sure. it this, and right now we have money for it. <clears throat> uh, we may not have money, but and if, it may be taken away, but right now we have money for this. So I'll sh go scroll through the plans. If anybody wants to ask a question, Jump yeah, in. I mean, I guess if, even if you just wanted to show us, I mean, like I had pulled up on Google and things like, you know, if you wanted to show us, you know, just like with the aerial on Google or whatever, whatever works about, you know, sort of where things are happening. Um, if If we think that these plans are too detailed, I just when I as I said, just based on the memo, I really wasn't sure exactly what was going to be where. So. Okay. Well, I'll show, I'll run through the plans. So, and if you want to see the aerial, I'll turn it on next. Yeah. Okay. I mean, so because I know the plans are super detailed, right? So. So uh, yeah. So this page here is a demo plan. So this is the existing conditions. So you can see this. This is the sidewalk here, and there's actually room behind the sidewalk to the property line. There's probably about two to three feet mostly. So we're actually taking the sidewalk and we're shoving it all the way against the property line. Mm -hmm. And we're doing the same thing on this on the south side. This this sidewalk here, this will get pushed down, and then most of this grass area. There's no one not on this side. Most of the grass area will go away to accommodate the bike lanes. So that's where we're getting the space for it. So everything's so I, widening out. So I do have a question. So I had seen um, I mean it's not really a plan per se, but somebody had sent me the materials that the affordable housing organization submitted and they have renderings of the project and it seems like there's no grass median there no so, in front of the project right in front the of the project the right so the it's basically like right it looks very close to the sidewalk like only a small not it's even small. like a grass like the the, the line of the project basically goes almost up to the sidewalk so there there isn't like a grass buffer anymore no, nope, it's basically a very urban, it's going to be a very urban approach or a very urban look to this. So That's I just wanted to see like if that was all like compatible with, because you were talking about that there was still grass. I don't, so. Well, there might be some on the far side, okay. on, the, on the south side, but not pretty much almost everything on the north side is going away. Um, <laughs> so this is, a, again, a demo plan. The property line is back here. There's room to push the sidewalk back and move the road out. So the property line is that dash line up there? It's this dash line here, yes. Uh -huh. And so the rest is the public way. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. From this dash line to this dash line is what we have to work okay. in. Okay. And um, so like how large are the travel how wide are the travel lanes now? Um, they're probably anywhere from 
12 in some spots to 14. What is the min minimum for whatever the speed limit is or whatever there? Uh, the speed is actually low in this area. So you, you can go 10, you can go to 11s here. Mm -hmm. And how wide, I can't see on your current map. I can't read that small. Um, how wide is the street there? Let me, I, I'll show you, I'll show you it farther down because it, it actually varies. Oh, okay. These little, it just varies. Okay. <clears throat> so wait, this be that, that, the, on both sides those, and they're they current is, right? Yeah. Well, it, I didn't get, you, there was two questions there. I didn't get it. Right. Um, mm, how wide it will the, will the sidewalk increase in size? And my second question was, the sidewalk is on currently on both sides. The sidewalk is currently on both sides. And it the will side... widen. And and it stops then the south sidewalk, doesn't it stop near Colonial Village, right? And then yes. the north sidewalk goes all the way out to like Rolling Green and Gatehouse Road. Correct. So and the sidewalks range anywhere from three feet to four feet. Okay. Um, so this is the first page of the construction plans. So we're having a 30, 32 foot minimum between curb to curb. So that allows for a 12 foot and 12, that's 24. I always have a hard time adding this. Small math kills me lately. <clears throat> but that, yeah. that allows for the 12, 11 foot lane, five foot bike lanes on both sides. That's 32. It's written so right there. So yeah. to get to that width, so because again, like when I was there, there's just this very tiny, tiny shoulder. So to get to that width, does that involve narrowing? I'm assuming it involves some narrowing of the current travel lanes. No. And then also, oh, it doesn't. No, we're you're pushing. We're pushing back all the way to the property line we right. own. Okay. Yeah. So the sidewalk is all the way up on the property line now here. <clears throat> Okay, got it. And th this side actually we're not, and we still have a grass belt in between. Mm -hmm. Right. So on the north side, oh, on the south side, the there, south oh, right, there's the brass. And that's Cumberland Farms, the gas yeah. station down there. Yeah. Okay. This right here is the um, Cumberland Farms gas station. Yeah. Okay. And so now, so if you have the 11 foot travel lane and the five foot bike lane, then you don't have any buffer at all between the the travel lane and the bike lane is that right no it's just the just right. the five if you yeah it's just five feet of bike lane and the bike lane is on the south side on the cumby side it's not on, on both the, sides on no, both, on both. Side. so it goes sidewalk bike lane travel then, lane center lane okay so and and what is the speed limit there um i think it's actually 35 in this area and then it drops, I think, the 25 in here somewhere. But I'm so, not sure. I, so, I mean, some of the projects, right, like on like University Drive or when, when the state was redoing like sections of Route 9, um, Russell Street, like they do have a buffer a little bit between the bike lane and the travel lane for cars. It just, it seems like the cars there move pretty fast. And um... well, you know, you know what I like, I mean. I mean, kids who are on bikes could be on the sidewalk. Sure. And the nice thing about the bike lane is it is a buffer between the well, sides. Well, it's, it's five feet, right? So it's, yes. you know. It's, but it's yeah. a buffer between the sidewalk and the lane, you know. I mean, confident cyclists, I would feel fine being on that bike, that bike lane kids likely not but at least it's a buffer for the sidewalks because 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 you know it is it is a little scary to be on a sidewalk that's right on a busy street right if you're especially if you're a child but with a bike lane i mean i i i kind of like i like this because it helps the walkers well really. so to that to that and so I know when Chris and I had met with the principals when we were doing the safe routes to school evaluation in that area mm -hmm. right so I mean there is that sidewalk on the north side that goes all the way to rolling green but given the speeds of 
cars in that area, you know, and then truck traffic and so on that people were saying, like, even if it feels scary, even if they the were sidewalk. walking on the yeah. sidewalk, no, no, I do understand or even as a grown up that the speeds are high and yeah, would people trust allow their kids to like walk right. without like the buffer. Um, yeah. Guilford, so if the currently um, a kid riding their bike from Colonial Village over to Fort River comes out of the driveway and takes a left on the sidewalk and goes in front of Cumbies, right? And then they go down to the intersection and that's where they cross over. Is that right. how, that's what a kid would do currently? Correct. So, um, but we is didn't that, see anybody. Is that still the case in this new scheme or are there, especially with affordable housing across the street, is there um, a way for, for there to be crossing, you know, before the intersection? There is. So let me back up a little bit. So if I, the reason this plan is so far along is, is because um, we call this, we call the bike lanes shoulder, not bike lanes. And we call this a minor improvement, but the town council has this thing about changes to the public way, which, which they have to see. And if you put a crosswalk in, they have to approve it. So okay. the only reason this is really being aired is because there's a crosswalk now that's added and it's farther down to the, it's farther to the east. So, so it's, further, it's further towards the Port River Bridge. Yes. So the kids coming out would still do what they're they're not going to take a right and go away from school if they're going to school right um so i'll show you when i get we get there we're almost yeah, there sure. oh, okay. okay so we're, we're still the north side the sidewalk is right up against the road there's no grass belt the sidewalk is all the way against the property line on the north side. north side we push the we wind out the south side sidewalk and pushed it against the property line, but because of the power poles, there's actually a grass strip on the south side. There's power pole here. And there's there's also some like mailboxes and stuff. I'm like, I'd, I'd hate to end up with a Pelham Road scenario. Well, you might. Cause you mean with those with the mailboxes on the street side? Is that what? Yeah, you I mean, just how they're the sidewalk. Yeah, they're like right. in the middle of the sidewalk. They're in like mm -hmm. some of the well, like, I mean, yeah, some of them the are sidewalk. like on the grass near the sidewalk but they could <laughs> you know if, it, if you push it to the property line they could get pushed more into the sidewalk but so, so um here we are again we're, we're going down the, the second road it's the same layout on the north and south side and then we get to the second driveway um for rolling okay. green oh okay so this is the one crosswalk. Um, this is the crosswalk. This is this is the driveway right here that goes into the affordable housing, the future affordable housing. Yeah. So we laid that out, and then we put a crosswalk here. If you see the if you see the pictorial of the uh, affordable housing, there they have a walkway that comes right to here. That's where their walkway will come uh, to. Okay. So if you come to this walkway, you can cross over to the south side and use the south side sidewalk, or you can stay on the north side sidewalk and do what you want to do to get to school. Um, again, we have a grass belt on the south side because there's uh, power poles that we don't want to move. Mm -hmm. um, but we do push the sidewalk all the way back to the property line. And how, how wide is the sidewalk there? I can't see. The, the sidewalks are five feet. Okay, good. Yep. And On where, where, where is Colonial Village? This is Colonial Village right here below us. And so where's the entrance to Colonial Village? Is it on this right, map or is it? Right, is, right here is, I think, let me see if it goes one more. Yeah. So oh, this okay. is the second. Oh, direction. interesting. And so, so the sidewalk goes past that. To further to the east what is the yeah south? so this is this is our cutoff for phase one right yeah. and when we start phase two we'll back up and align with where we left off here and keep running mm -hmm. the same profile all the way down to the bridge pretty much cool and it 
Is there only one new crosswalk? There's, I thought there were two. No, there's only this one. Only one. Okay. This is actually the the lower the lower plan here is something else. It's a lot more detail. I don't need to look at that. You need to look at the okay. one. You need to look at the one at the top up here. This is just a detail one down at the bottom. So starting from the bridge, um, if I'm on the uh, south side and I'm traveling west, it's going to go five foot sidewalk, a little grass strip, and then a five foot bike lane, and then the road. For, yeah, for most of the for most of the layout, yes, there are. There's if you keep going, if you do the second phase, if you look at the second phase of this. Um, there is a couple of houses that stick into the public way and they actually read there's some restrictions they cause. Um, so that is something that will happen. You mean, is that why there's so little same thing? Sorry. I'm sorry, Kim coming from the North or on the North side, traveling West, it's five feet of sidewalk, no grass strip bike lane. And then um the travel lane for cars correct okay that i mean this is like a, an enormous improvement personally i think um guilford is the little angle at the end of the sidewalk um on the you know south side uh, here is that is that because of the right of way that you were just talking about the housing, is that why it's angled like that? No, no, this is the end of phase oh. one. So we have to tie phase one in the existing. Oh, oh, okay. I got it. Okay. And then so phase two back up a little bit and then. Yeah. We... Okay. Got it. <laughs> these two will back up and grab these corners here and here yeah. and then run. Okay. Got it. So could we. Yeah. So Guilford, did you get to that? Because we're only looking at the phase one, right? Like the memo is only about phase one, right? So yes, and the, and this the is idea the, is for us to weigh, weigh in on phase one. Yeah, and this is the typical cross section here, right here. And that's okay. exactly what Christine said. It's five foot sidewalk, no, no buffer, five foot bike lane, travel lane, travel lane, bike lane, buffer, sidewalk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's definitely an improvement and we need that, especially if the school's going in there and there's going to be more housing. And, and so how is kids, you know, so yeah. there's no buffer, but so is it like, um, is it just a single lane for the bike lane? Like, how is that going to be like designated yeah. between the, I mean, yes, it'll be a painted bike lane and it'll be one, okay. you know, one direction with the flow of traffic. Got it. And, remind and so when I, when I was, when I walked along and I, especially because of the recent like rain and, you know, other precipitation, but in the, in the very small area that um is currently that little like mini shoulder, um like there's a lot of debris, like a lot of the debris is like going the length, the width of that shoulder. And, you know, like there's a drain areas too, and there's just a lot of debris. So is there going to be anything done with the drainage so that, you know, sort of a worst case scenario with some of the bike lanes is that like they're full of debris and they're not actually that usable. And um, I mean, yeah. they get swept once a year in this area and that's it. Only and like what? this, I mean, and that's one issue too with those sidewalks there. Like, so the sidewalks for people who walk on the sidewalk out to rolling green, that that sidewalk can have a lot of like sand and grit and things like that. And, the sidewalk never really gets swept, right? Like the bike lanes would get swept, but the the sidewalks they they try to sweep them once a year as well. Okay. And it's usually the same time the sweeper comes through, or they sweep it, and the sweeper comes by again. So that's after the winter, or yes. So so can we um switch over to like the aerial, or I can pull up the Google too. I can pull. Up, I got it. I can get it right here. Okay. Okay. I would also just, I have that picture of the, like the affordable housing with the you no know, setback that I pulled up. Whoops. So, I mean, just to the committee. So, right. So our goal today 
is if we're not going to take action on Heatherstone, which I think we should wait until the forum, um, until after the forum, then our goal tonight is just to have any recommendations we have about this small project on Belchertown Road that we want to we want to kind of have our key points. Well, then... um, Gilford, can, do you know any quick stats about the new affordable housing that's going to go in on those properties? Like, I don't know how many people or uh, the site, how much parking, I guess I'm, how much more is that going to drive? Um, I can traffic there. So Chris, I have that up on my computer. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, oh, so he's going to stop sharing. Okay. I can share. Um, How many units are going to go in there? So I thought there was like, it said that there are 47 proposed. Hold on. Sorry. So this is this. So, so what I was talking about is how, like, so this is the rendering that um, has been reviewed lately. And they ju it just didn't seem like there was that much, like, here's the sidewalk. It didn't seem like there was that much sort of buffer except for the buffer that's actually part of the property. So um, does this does this rendering Guilford take into account the new bike lane as well? Um it should. I mean, if you look okay. at the at the closest one, there actually is a bike lane symbol oh, here. Yeah. Yeah, there's but this one right here. Right. right. Tracy, what are you saying? What did you say? I didn't follow what you said about <laughs> a lack of a buffer. No, I just meant over on the building side, right? That yeah. it's not really, that this grass buffer is like part of the property. You know, that it's not just like a immediate, like, yeah, like it's not like here on the south side, right? You still have grass and you have a sidewalk and you have the bike lane and then you have the travel lane, right? But on this north side, I guess that's probably a bike lane, and then you have the sidewalk, and then you have the property. Yeah, so we it should, looks like just a sort of, bike lane. Oh, hi, Marcus. We should figure out if it actually is a bike lane, because it, I, it's I, supposed I, to be. Well, I mean, Wilford's building a bike lane there. He yes. said. So <laughs> I know, but but <clears throat> does that will that reduce the green space in front of the house? Oh, and so also, so these are the basic stats on it. Oh, so um. So just for Amber's minutes, like Marcus, so you can just identify that you came to, I don't know, have you been here very long? Marcus in the meeting. Sorry, hitting me, but yeah, I am here. I have not been here for too long. But, okay. uh, my name All is right. Marcus Smith. Yeah. All right, thank you. All right, so this is what, um, you know, there's, it's a 50 page application, but it's basically, it, it has, oh, sure. Uh, thank you. Yeah, so it has uh, 47 units proposed, and that has 46 off on site parking spaces. Okay, so I mean, so to me, Guilford, I want to see a lower speed. You know, if we're providing opportunities for you know, I think it's way better for kids commuting from Colonial Village to Fort River to have a new, um, you know, to have a new crosswalk. But um, it seems pretty scary if we're also adding, you know, the the potential for at least, I don't know. So they're saying 40 cars here, basically one car per unit, more right. or less. So, you guys could all be on the sidewalk. So what's before you is the adding the crosswalk. There's nothing about speed or changing any of that. Okay. So if you want to add that as a separate item, you'd be, I mean, you're welcome to, but okay. if you want to hold up the project because of that. that I don't thing. want to hold up. The well, project. I think though that, I mean, I think to Chris's point, right. That, that, um, I mean, one, I don't think we're holding up the project, but like we were asked to look at it, you know, also, like through a, le like a bigger lens. And I mean, to me too, like I am when I visited, when I visit the site and there are large traffic, you know, it is pretty fast moving traffic. Um, like, I think it is okay for attack to just say that we have concerns about speed. And yeah. like, for example, with the crosswalk, right? I just, I mean, and I've been thinking about this, you know, with Heatherstone too, but just because you build a, a sidewalk, it doesn't make the traffic go slower. 
or just because you build a bike lane. I mean, the bike lane, you could slow down the traffic because you're narrowing the traffic, the travel lane. So the, the car, right. the drivers may feel like, oh, I should go slower because I have a narrower traffic travel lane. So in that respect, but you know, for just me, just because like, you lower the speed limit says the same thing. No. And I mean, and, and I mean, I have concerns about like artificial, like having artificially low speed limit signs when vehicles are going faster. But I mean, with the, tr with the, um, with the crosswalk, not much. Between. I just want to make sure that like the crosswalk is actually safe. Right. We, I mean, like how it's situated and how it, how kids in the or whoever's in the crosswalk is like interacting with traffic and our vehicle is going to stop for them and is you know, it are there joe has so. a question yeah this is a question about cars coming out onto the main road there um are they allowed to take both the left and the right it just seems awkward with the crosswalk and visibility That's yes there they'll be allowed to make a left or a right so the the crosswalk is farther down the building. So oh, it's so probably it, about, it, it is across from the building? Yeah, but it's probably 100, 150 feet from the driveway. Except where you're at. Uh, well, actually, no, they're supposed to. So here. I'm not sure. So. Yeah, it's... um. The crosswalk is halfway between the two driveways at Colonial Village and the uh, new new development. It's about it's probably it's it's two hundred feet between the two driveways, roughly. So it's a hundred feet from each driveway. So is that enough space to see? Uh, I don't even know. So here, I'm gonna like well, that's what I was actually wondering about because you know we had the incident down at Rocker Farm, but that crosswalk is pretty much on top of the junction. So, right. so I'll, I'll and just she and she crossed the, she was crossing the angle, right, right, and that can yeah. happen too with some. So, so is this um. So looking just at this aerial, so this is the Colonial Village driveway, and this is the the sections with the affordable housing, isn't it? Like this lot here. Yes. And, and then there's a lot like the gr little greenhouse that's like in the trees. I'm assuming. Yep. Um. So the crosswalk is designed to be here. Between the yeah, between the driveways. And you had said that it's going to have rectangular rapid flashing beacons. Yeah. So, and and where where are the bus stops in that area? When I was there, I didn't see any bus stop signs. There's no bus stop in this area. Really? So there's really? the Colonial Village bus stops, right? The bus right. goes in, and the and the bus goes into Colonial Village in both directions, I believe, right? When it's going outbound and inbound. Yeah, it passes through the village. Yeah. Well, it goes it goes down Southeast Street, goes into Colonial Village, comes out, makes a right, goes down Colonial or Butchtown Road to Gatehouse, goes through Gatehouse, goes through Deep Woods or Deep, uh, goes through Heatherstone, and then comes back out route um, on Main Street. Right. So, like, this is like the Colonial Village is on the left, and. I think is this house like part of the affordable housing or is it like the next house? I think it's the next one. It's like in here. So um so I mean just you know as you can see in this area. I guess I'm just gonna say my questions about the um the traffic are um you know sort of addressed somewhat because the I didn't know that there was the rectangular flashing beacon or I'm sorry I never get there the correct terminology rectangular rapid rfbs just or flashing lights that's right. fine <laughs> so to me that seems huge um that is almost that to me is a game changer on the plan and i don't have as many concerns about speed um because the pedestrians and and the cyclists are in control of that and um, so anyway, I guess I withdraw the 
No, I yeah, I, I would agree, Christine. Yeah, to me, having the RFBs there is good. Coming now, out of town, they're not too far away from the intersection. But I guess, yeah. but I guess one thing is like, what kind of lighting is here at night, for example? Because I would think that you know, particularly in the winter months, that you would have traffic, you know, crossing like Colonial Village traffic crossing and things, and that. I mean, I've just found personally that when I'm in near downtown, even if I'm using a rectangular rapid flashing beacon crosswalk at night and I'm having it flash, like not vehicles don't always stop. And and the roads in the downtown are less. Um, the, yeah, the but I would say that they don't always stop they, even, you know, no, even know, in ideal course. conditions. Right, right. right. Yeah. But I know like, like a TSO, for example, like Myra Ross, had commented just about like her concerns, you know, for people with well, mobility yeah. issues and things that people aren't stopping. But um, I mean, that's an ongoing issue, right? Of course, yeah. yeah. And I mean, just go, go down the road a little bit. So I did want to say here, like you can see, like how if you only sweep the road like once a year, how there just is this buildup. And I mean, I feel a little better if it's five feet wide because this is probably like two feet wide, so that they're yeah. still clear, but. In the narrow shoulder right now. Yeah, I, I, for sure. So, um, oh, you went too far. All right, that's good. Okay. Now, this if is look, a lot with the housing. Yeah, like so where the, the X, day, where the X is is where the crosswalk will be. And if oh, you here. go back across, there's a street light right within 10 feet of the crosswalk. It's right here. There. Right there. Yeah. Oh, so that that, has that's the only other lighting there'll be at the crosswalk. Oh. And the and then yeah. so and how does the so as we approach right so the memo covered is going to work <laughs> so and the bike lane is just going to continue like along like as you hit all these commercial traffic there's no concern about um you know interfacing like with the bike lane or anything is is the bike lane going to be painted like I know sometimes the mascot ones are painted green or something to designate it. As a bike lane? At the driveways? No. Just, um, just so, like, for example, like, this is a long, you know, some of these are, like, longer stretches. That one's going away. That's becoming more housing. Okay. For Reliance Auto? Yeah, it's going to become more housing. Private housing? No. Yes. And then, so how, so if you're in a bike, if you're, if you're biking here, Right. And then there's this, um, how is this going to be handled? Like with the bike lane? That is the phase four, which is part of the Fort River school issue. But I thought that, I thought that we're looking at from Southeast street, aren't we? Didn't the memo start at Southeast street or it no? It does, but we've cut it short because of the work that's going to be done at the, for the Fort River school. So is there going to be a bike lane like on this section? That was the line. original plan. And so where where's the bike lane going to end? On the west side? Yeah, um, the original plan is that the bike lane carries all the way through to the intersection. Okay. So You're you just waiting now? to see whether you put a, um, a roundabout in there or not? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> we look to see what's going to be the next uh, improvement there, yes. <laughs> so, okay, so... So but what's what going to happen, so if we're, you know, sorry, if we turn it around, right, and then, so where, do you have a sense of where the bike lane is going to end? So, I mean, right yeah. we're back near Colonial Village, and then we turn back around. I mean, I, do, I worry about those transitions with the bike lane to no bike lane. Um, but isn't the project like the other, the project with the sidewalks i mean i know they're all related so are the sidewalks being looked at more in this section and not all the way to the intersection the or... whole project went all the way to the intersection originally but then the right. intersection got cut out too okay so the the, inter the sidewalks and the bike lane will end around the second driveway to cumberland farms okay oh, okay so, so like here that's the first one or the second one 
Is that the first one or the second oh, one? Oh, there's one more in front of, in front of, keep going. Yeah, well, so it's going to end. Well, it's, that's what I meant. This power, this power pole right here on the left. Power pole. Where your arrow's pointing towards it. A little, oh. That one? No, no. Oh, okay. Oh, Go the other, the, the other way. Go the other way. Okay. So right. we go back down, yeah. Now you're facing the wrong way. All right, I know. Yeah, you you were good. It's it's the okay. one with the transformer on it. The one past that oh, yeah. white car. Yeah, past yeah, the white the one car. over here. Now that power pole is where where the um the bike lane huh? ends, and then the sidewalk continues on just a little bit. It goes to the driveway. Okay. So like so again, I mean, I guess I just wondered about um. So if somebody is. So if somebody's in the five foot bike lane coming towards, you know, towards this intersection, towards these Amherst intersection, what's going to happen to them? So the bike lane is going to end. So it's going to end around like here. Yes. They go and, up then, on the sidewalk. and then they're supposed to go up on the sidewalk. So is it going to be like, no, a they can just merge into traffic there because it's really wide. And, now. and, and there's those, the, the intersection, right? So yes. it's slowing down. Okay. I mean, I just, I mean, yeah. you would have to be like me, a fearless cyclist. I mean, well, that's no, what I mean. I just, no, just like, just to be clear, the, the plan is not to have them stop. It is what we're saying is that the, the pot of money and the planning around the, oh, sure. right. From this section that we're looking at. So Guilford, are you saying that the bike lanes are stopping entirely, or is it just that they will be picked up in another project? They'll be picked up later. Yes. Right. No, I understand. I just, I just meant in the meantime. I just they stop now. But like, if you just look at, you know, where, where the most crashes and conflicts happen, it can be at places like this, <laughs> like when yeah. you have a five foot bike lane and then you don't have a five foot bike lane. I mean, that was just my quick point. Right. Well, I mean, and I mean, that's where I warned Terry too about this intersection, which isn't yeah. now something we're looking at. But again, if you have cyclists, some cyclists will go this way and some cyclists will go this way. And I don't, vehicles can be very fast going through here. And so, right, you don't want the cyclists to get like stranded or yeah, have any because that's like a cut off, conflicts. cut through. Yeah. Yeah. Cut through. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so. we can't do anything about it, right? Because we no. know that it, it's, yeah, it's unfortunate, but this is the first part that's happening. So we, but I mean, are there signs or I don't know? Are there other things like bike lane ends? Yield to cyclists. Yeah, yeah, Yield no, that's cyclists. true. Yeah, there'll be there'll be signs that say the bike lane ends and the merge share the road after that. Okay, good. Yeah, I mean that's all that we can do at this point. I mean there will be more, but I don't know. Right. Although I do, I do agree. I mean, you know, maybe if there could be the green, you know, the, the, the problem I see, even if it was me and I'm, I'm a confident cyclist. I mean, if I were continuing to the left, instead of going straight here, you know, and there's a car behind me, I mean, this happens all the time to me. I mean, cars don't like pretend like I'm not even there. Um, you know, having the, the green paint that allows cyclists to, you know, mm -hmm. go to the left still on the side of the road. To me, that would be a safer option. It's just paint and it's just paint. So. And they put stuff in to make it like pretty durable and not slippery. Like yeah. The Mastio T ones, oh. but. I and think... so the crosswalk project then too, I mean, sorry, go for the sidewalk piece, like wasn't that one grant, I thought it was for this intersection and then it was going west, I mean, sorry, east, but that part, so none of the, there aren't going to be any like sidewalk and stuff improvements in this particular section until later. Is that right? Until later, yeah. Okay. So there we can like go back to the... Because one thing I noticed at this intersection is that there's like no restrictions on right turns on red too. And I've been thinking too, like about if cyclists were coming and mm -hmm. 
things that that um, would be. I believe there is for now. Well, there were some, there are, at least in some directions there aren't, so. Um, some some town committee went crazy and recommended no right turn on red and everything. Really? Really. Um, I think I might I might go and walk this this weekend, actually. Yeah, I've I've walked it. I found I found it really helpful. With these do that. I might do that. So I have a so better understanding. Just, um... oh, so this I get this one's no, not sorry. a no right turn on red. You can turn no, red and yeah. red all four four of these. Yeah. That's what oh, so that's what I was I mean, that's where I was thinking just you know, just about again, like I I mean I really I heard you know, when Myra Ross was speaking at the TSO meeting, she was just talking about like the importance about like the interfaces of, you know, pedestrians and bicycles and vehicles and, and when you design them, like keeping everybody safe, <laughs> you know, and doing it in a way where you still have like good traffic movement and things like that. And so, yeah, so that was on my mind with that. So, okay. Well, so does anybody else have any other questions about it? I know, I think this answered most of mine. Um, Guilford, what are your takeaways from this conversation? I mean, you, you're you're basically coming up with your recommendations. You'll make those recommendations. Huh? Okay. I mean, I don't have Yeah, a... I mean, I think, right, that, I mean, we all think that this intersection and this whole stretch of roadway, like this is like Belchertown Road is a major corridor for biking, for walking. You know, it's on the bike ped plan. Um, everybody supports. I mean, I feel like we would all, I mean, we could even, you know, vote or something, but we all support better infrastructure there. And well, especially having, with like, the, you know, as Chris was saying, like, it's, you know, and having a crosswalk. And I mean, we, like, yeah, things, I think the, things need yeah. to be done. So. Right. Thinking ahead of this, right. Yeah, Adding that crosswalk so. is great for kids coming out of Colonial Village, going to Port River right, right. or going to the future school. Right. I mean, that to mm -hmm. me is the big thing. Sure. I'm fully supportive of that. I think that needs to happen as soon as we can get it to happen. And yeah, we can work on the, the main intersection at a later date when the money comes in for that. But yeah, let's get this in. And then move forward, right? I mean, the rapid flashing beacons help a lot. We're all yeah. good to go, you know. Agreed. You you have a hand up in the audience. Yes, hi. We can take the comment. So the, can, uh, you, can you let her? You can let her enter, or. She should be coming in. Or you can talk without coming in, if if Guilford unmuted you. Oh, there she goes. I think he's cutting in and out. Did I hear my name here? No. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Am I on? Yes. yes. Okay. So I want to clarify two things. One is that people like really avoid turning right out of Cumberland Farm store onto Route 9. And there's because the trucks and cars go around that corner somehow really fast. Yeah. And and often there's a big pothole right there. I don't know why. Something, you know, something about water. Um, but there's often a big pothole as you're turning right there. Um, also, you were talking about the bus going through Echo Hill um, at Gatehouse Road. That's the number 45 bus, um, which is a pretty infrequent bus. Like, you know, it's like four times a day. Um, more frequently, you got you get the number 30, um, which goes straight on Route 9 up to either Old Farm Road, and then it turns around or all the way to... Um, Belcher Town Center. And I also just want to mention that the residents of the, the new build, the new apartments, um, the all, uh, affordable apartments, some of those are um, really, I think, going to be designed for families, and they're like three bedrooms. Um, and those people will have to cross Route 9 to get to the 
wait a minute. No. To Colonial Village to get the bus that stops twice in Colonial Village, right? There's also a bus stop, which is further, um, right outside the JCA on, on Main Street. The, you know, they had their choice of the one further Main Street or crossing the road. Um, and that would include kids to get to the bus uh, in Colonial Village that goes in both directions and stops twice. Yeah, that's good information because because I think the new crosswalk would serve that population specifically. Yeah, yeah anybody going into town from that new affordable housing development uh -huh. Uh -huh. would probably want to take the Colonial Village, the closest Colonial Village bus yeah. stop. Which would which that rapid beacon the the crosswalk would be between the two of those um, entrances so so that would work that's really useful yeah yeah I don't know about the two entrances one unless you're talking about the one on Southeast Street and the one on Route Nine yeah okay yeah <laughs> thank you. The memo from Guilford and the town manager referred to like a bus stop along the section of Delta Town Road. Is that correct, Guilford? Or did I misunderstand that? There's no bus stop on from oh. this section. Oh, yeah. If I you, thought I read that, too. I thought I read that. So, for example. Let's and the next phase, there are. But in this phase, there oh, are. Oh, it says, hold on. It says there are no bus pull-offs being added for the bus stops due to the limited right of way. But I guess the question is, so are there bus stops there or are there not bus stops along this particular section? The the closest two bus stops are, are um, well, Main Street, as um, she was saying. Yeah. The, and there's no bus stops. The closest no. are these two right here in Colonial Village. Oh, in the Colonial Village, right. And so and the, the crosswalk is between the new inner the new housing oh, and gosh. where yeah the yeah. entrance to that right in this area by the B for Belchertown. Yep. Well, actually, over here. So that could be used for that for those people getting from. Yes, you can come down bus. here and get on the bus. It's that's the closest too. Yeah. And if kids are walking to school, which isn't that far from there, they can just stay right on that sidewalk, right? And that will go, yeah. Yeah. So I, so I wonder, do kids from Colonial Village, do they take the bus, if they go to Fort River now, do they take the bus to Fort River? Or do they walk? There's a there's a bus that goes in there. Yeah. A school bus. Okay. So, and yeah, they're more than quarter of a mile. They have to go on the bus. It's pretty close, but I don't know. It's um, certain kids it's... with special needs are guaranteed, um, yeah. and are kindergartners, and kindergartners. And then, so then, but, if yeah, the bus there, Amherst will throw it open to anybody. I mean, the state law says that uh, it only has K to eight. It's only two miles. Like you only need to provide bus transportation if it's more than two miles, which is pretty far. Yeah, so, it is. Amherst does more than that. But there are a fair amount of kids um, that that bike and walk from Colonial Village. I mean, Tammy, the principal, has told me um, she's a little frustrated we haven't found a parent chaperone from Colonial Village to you know create a rallying point for safe routes. But yeah, there's a fair amount that do. Okay, so we do. It is already seven thirty-five. I mean, six thirty-five. I know we had some other things we wanted to cover. Um, do we, I mean, I can write up, a, you know, we have to sort of write something up to submit to TSO and I can write that we support the projects and, you know, we, and we support the crosswalk and we like it as part of a linkage, like with these other things. And we had some, you know, comments about the transitions. Is there anything else that we think we need to bring up in our memo? I think our memo can be pretty, I mean, this project has been in the works for so long and it is part of this bigger thing and it's clear that we need to do something right so does anybody else have any other comments that they want I think I should put in that memo I I guess I would feel more more comfortable if I 
actually took these plants and walked on it. It's not that far, which I will do this weekend before we submit it. Yeah. We can a do recommendation. That. I would really feel more comfortable by looking and seeing what the actual plans are. Sorry. <laughs> Well, Tracy, so I mean, Tracy can still write it up and send it yeah, to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I mean, Kim, and I'm happy to, you know, meet you informally. Like I've walked it myself, but yeah. Um, I mean, to me, one thing too is that this is like the memo says it's like a 900 foot section. It's just not that right. long. It's short, so, yeah, which is and, and it's an important connection. So yeah, um, yeah. I'll mm -hmm. I can circulate it. I mean, so uh, TSO will meet next week. And I'm not sure exactly, you know, the order in which they're doing things because they also have some other projects to consider, but we can share, we can share our like brief comments with them. So I can circulate something like sure. a draft over the weekend and people can look at it, but I won't write some comprehensive memo or anything. Okay. So. Okay. And then I did put on the agenda Heatherstone, but because we're already getting a little late and I want to make sure we have time to discuss a few other things. Um, can we just push that discussion of Heatherstone back to later? Because, I mean, there is going to be a public forum in May. Go ahead, Guilford. The only thing I would say is look at the some of the documents from other communities. Portland has uh, a mini roundabout uh, document. The... Um, town this city of someplace in massachusetts arlington it's arlington i think in mass they, they've been putting some in um what you, what was given to the tso was more of the standard information from mass dot and from federal highway um if we actually move forward with doing these roundabouts they're going to be in the 40 to 45 foot diameter range much much smaller um Really, so that sounds was, perfect. I mean, the sounds memo, right? Perfect to me. the, the memo that came out, it said they were 50 to 90. So that matched the mass DOT and the. Right. No, I understand that. But then I actually went and looked in. So, like, fearing at university is around 90. And then, you know, like, triangle is like 115 or something. So, so yeah. but, university is because it's going to be smaller than the one at university. Much smaller. The, the university. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's no. perfect. That's it's going to be. Size we need to be doing. It's going to be like a 15 foot wide travel lane going around it. And then the inside is going to be much. It's, it's going to be the rest of that 40 feet probably. Anyway. So it's 10 foot. Well, there's a 10 foot island in the middle. I would like to talk about it at a meeting, at a future meeting too. Because right, no, not everybody. I'm just, I'm yeah, just telling no. you to look for those those documents and that type sure. of information, and that'll help you understand what we're talking about more. So is is the idea there um, traffic calming? It is. Roundabout? Yeah. But, okay. but there are some people, I mean, listening to the comments, right, there are some people in the neighborhood who support the medians, and there are some people in the neighborhood who want sidewalks and some people who don't want sidewalks. And... Yes. So, and I, mean, I it personally, seems like there's a lot of different points of view. Yeah. Per personally, I'm okay with any way we go, but if we pave it and there's no traffic calming, yeah. regardless if the island stays, no one in that neighborhood has a right or will be listened to when they complain about the fastness of the vehicles driving through there. We're just going to so, hang up on them. So, one, one thing, Guilford, I was wondering, I mean, I know we're going to, you know, we'll talk more at a different time, but when I walked that section, like I know that. I'm mean, included um, a crosswalk across um, Heatherstone at Pelham, and um, and that it seems like the the cross like that area like right at, if you're on Heatherstone and you're approaching Pelham, the the road widens a lot like as you're approaching Pelham so that there's like wide turns like in both directions, and that one it makes um, the stop lines go back you know, further, and it seems like the sight lines aren't that good, you know, particularly from the right, because there's, like, vegetation, there's also, like, a curve and the hill and things, but then does the, does the, the width have to be that big at the intersection? Like, could no. it be, like, could it be, 
not it doesn't have to be like 90 degrees but to make it smaller because it seemed to me like it's almost visually it seems almost twice as wide as the road and and I really like the idea of having a crosswalk there it's really good connectivity to the Pelham Library and the school and you know from Amethyst Brook and everything but then it seemed a little daunting that the crosswalk is so that section is so wide <laughs> But to me, it is. It was just built that way. We don't know why it was just built that way. But is that something that could be included in the project to narrow it a little? Um, we've been looking at it and we'll probably adjust it as we get through, go through. Okay. But it actually kind of requires us to do work in Pelham Road, which we're not really willing to do yet. Oh. Or just try to like make the curvature less on the Heather Road part or something. Anyway, just an idea. Um, so I, I'll check in with TSO about when their public hearing, public forum is going to be, and then we can time. Maybe we could talk about it the next meeting. That's fine. Um, I was just telling you, those are the yeah. No, those are good. Those are the documents to read more about and yep. those communities. Thank you. And um, I would I also wanna... suggest do we look at the um, over in the UK, a lot of the travel standards. You know, they have a lot of mini roundabouts about that sort of size too. So yeah, it's worth that... a look over there too. I mean, I did have a concern that people would speed up like in between the mini roundabouts a little bit, maybe. Because yeah. I find... I mean, that's true of anything, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, you find that coming out of the larger roundabouts that it's actually not always that safe for pedestrians because people, the minute they get out of the, out of the turn, they're going faster. And then it reminded me a little too of when yeah, my, but that's why my you street the... now has... My street now has the speed humps and that, you know, people want to speed up in between the speed hump right. kind of mentality. <laughs> so Yeah, it's it's all it's all yeah, tied together. Yeah. It's all tied together. But it does um, it does slow people down. It makes them more attentive, right? So Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a an obstruction in the middle of the road. It kicks slows people down. Sorry, kids are trying to go outside. Um all right. So I did want to just share quickly, um, I know we're going to want to break the meeting too. So before we get into any of these other items, do we, um, can we have the meeting in two weeks, like on school vacation week, or is that going to not work for people? I will be in Florida, but. Okay. I am not allowed to call in. I've just been given the <laughs> hell no from my wife, so. Okay. Good to know. <laughs> Anybody else? Is that a conflict? I will be back from um, where we're headed. So I'm, okay. yeah, I should be around then too. So, okay. Fine for me. Well, all right, good. So it sounds like we have a quorum of us. So I suggest we do that because TSO is probably going to refer more stuff to us. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be good to get that in. So we can let Amber know um, that it will be on the 18th. And that's a way better week for me than later in the month. So, okay. Um, so wait, I did want to share. So I did have um we on the priority network map for the bike ped plan. So I did um there is now a website that has the mapping of um the bike ped plan. Let me see. Um, with the old data layers from the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, it was set up as like a public GIS viewer. Cool. Which when one cool that? thing is um, everybody, anybody who like is at UMass can um, automatically get like free. Well, one, the viewer is free, but you can actually download all of ArcGIS if you <laughs> are so inclined. So let me um, share that. Um, so yeah, so somebody in the town found the data layer and they put it in the viewer. Um, so these are the one, so what this is, is there was basically, there's about 600 little segments um and in the legends oh I quite no sorry in the layers so there's so they actually had done it in an in, like in terms of the GIS they actually had one set of routes that were bike priority routes and one that were pedestrian and they actually had them as like different data layers uh but we they got merged together into one data layer because it sort of doesn't make sense. Like if we're going to be updating any of these, like why would we, I mean, they're basically the same roads, right? So why wouldn't you just say on this segment of road, yes, it's a bike layer. No, it's a, not a, 
you know, yes, it's a bike layer. Yes, it's a ped layer. Yes, it's a bike layer. No, it's not a ped layer kind of thing. So that all got merged together. But the thing, the reality is that they're on top of each other. So, so when I, I, it just went up line and I will share the link to, with everybody so people can take a look at it. Um, and there's also a data file that goes along with it. So like, for example, on the pedestrian ones, if we then look at the legends. So, and this is from the original map and um, Kim, I had wanted to reach out to you as well as other people who were on the TAC when this was being done. But um, so basically there were, um, it was assigned basically in terms of whether it's like utilities, you know, utility walking, biking, like utilitarian more or more if it's recreation. So there were some segments that are yes, that you're utilitarian and no, they're not recreational and some that are the opposite and some that are both. So like, for example, if we blow this up, like this is like the Norwatok Rail Trail, which is both a commuter route and something that's also used for recreation. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, so Chris and I had met with um, a student at UMass, a grad student at UMass who was willing to like help edit some of these layers to reflect the comments from the mm -hmm. um, meetings we had had. And, um, and of course, other people can take a look at it too. So one question I had just particularly about the pedestrian one, and I don't remember I was really talking about this so much when we went over the map, but some of the routes on the pedestrian map, particularly the ones that are these like not utility, not utilitarian, like just recreation are, are paths that are not used for transportation. Like for example, like here you have like Amethyst Brook, like the mm -hmm. roots up with Amethyst Brook, <laughs> or you have stuff around like Cherry Hill, right? Um, and so my question would be, should those be on our like priority pedestrian networks or should we more limit it to spaces that people are actually using for transportation? Remember, if you make it and you call it a pedestrian access, it's gotta meet ADA standards. Well, that's another point. So, so we had talked yeah. about taking all the trails off because none right. of them can meet ADA standards. Yeah. But also, I mean, I also like the idea. I mean, you can have a you can have a town recreation plan, you know, and talk about like we like to have recreational trails. Um, well, there, there's but I don't, already a, there is a trail map. But I don't think that they should be like layers on this map. No, the ones and and even yeah. looking at like the golf course, right? Like it was in the paper that there would be some routes you know, with the golf course site that's being redeveloped that are wandering around. But then there's also some to actually help people get from like point A to point B, like to help people from East Hadley Road get to Pomeroy. So that to me would be, it would make that actually, that would be one to keep on there, <laughs> for example. Um, so. Which one? So, I'm you know, trying like, to remember. Because with the, new, with the new golf, like with the golf course being redeveloped, that part of it is to have a path so that people on East Hadley Road can access Pomeroy Village. So, whereas that's more that's more like the rail trail, you know, where people are using it. Yeah, I mean, presumably that actual be, that'll be paved, right? It's not, and right. that would be probably like ADA accessible or something <laughs> if people are. It's not going to be paved. It's likely going to be gravel, I'm assuming. But it would be, right. you know, it, it would have to have access, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. We're using yeah. it for transportation, so. Um, There's been so talk so about going from the um, community that's off. Yeah, East Alley, East, Alley, East Alley Road. I'm sorry, I'm getting confused on the roads. I'm so sorry, the Marcus. Question, the question no, is whether or not we think the, um, you know, the sort of recreational hiking Past. Yeah, no, off, off of our map and on yes. our rec map. Okay, all right, that's what that's one edit we'll make. And so, because I do remember that being part of the discussion. Actually, I remember because um, Eve, you know, lives on well, this neighborhood off, over here. Yeah, yeah, and and I do remember um, initially those paths kind of like through the UMass, I guess it's mm -hmm. UMass property there, we're, cons we're right. on our map and then we're like, well, they shouldn't be because they're not really public way and they're, you know, they're, they're not actually roads. So, right. 
yeah yeah and this whole thing i mean i've met eve and walked through this this is yeah. like just yeah, like yeah, yeah. trails yeah right. No. right for sure and we also talked about um that we wanted it to be like the connectors, like we weren't focusing on within neighborhoods, right? No. Like Echo Hill or my right. neighborhood, anybody's neighborhood, right? We weren't thinking, oh, we want walking along this way. We were thinking, how do you get between origins and destinations, between places where people live in downtown and between the village centers? Right, correct. So, yeah, so, okay. So um, there's a GIS, there's a student who's willing to like help on this, um, so hopefully we can start to update the layer and then because have we have uh -huh. have you talked to Mike Pointer about this? Yeah. So he's okay with the student doing the GIS edits? Well, these are I mean, this wouldn't be touching his original layer. Like this okay. would just be a copy layer. All right. Yeah. So well, do we need to do that if there is are you saying there a, the layer already exists Guilford I'm confused no this is a layer this is a this, layer this... like from the Pioneer Valley plan this the, is a the... copy it's a copy the, the issue is is taking it out having a student work on it and putting it back in and possibly infecting other files through some so I think I just... think it's fine yeah I was in Mike... touch with him about it well I'll have a talk with him too um Okay. We're having a lot of issues with a lot of things being corrupted by people taking them out, working on them, and sticking them back in. Okay. Um, that's my only concern. The, I mean, what Mike had told me too is that, I mean, this is set up as a viewer right now, but it could be set up where a few limited people could have access. And basically, these are just like attribute files. Like, I mean, these are zeros and ones in different yep. columns. And so, you know, based on the discussions from those earlier meetings, we could update the zeros and ones. We're not actually, um, you know, changing. <laughs> We're not creating like new line files and things like that. We're just changing some of the attributes so that it would display differently. And again, we're only working with a copy. We're not working with the original. That's fine. As long as it's just the copy. It's the copy. But I mean, like there, I mean, there were some things that I found like confusing looking at it like like some of these roots about like where was one like for i don't know i'd have to look at it more but there were just some where it, it's it was like a little counterintuitive like here like why is southeast street for example and again this is the questions where i wondered like how was it decided at the original meetings but like southeast street is shown as being um like not utilitarian but only recreational but like most people if they're if they're on southeast street they're it's like it's the, it's because they're trying to get places <laughs> to me right it's not something that people are just doing leisurely because they want to well it's a pretty it's stretch strong. of southeast street i guess it's got it's, views and right and there are very few houses down that way i mean uh, there are houses but it's not like a I mean, like some of this section right like that's still a lot of houses yes but i mean in it, it's relatively few it's not but like do you think that that's right then kim that those would be like we wouldn't are, say i think yeah i think those are right i i i really need to review these because yeah but i'm yeah it's been sure. so long that it's been really actually, long like, i mean we did it three yeah. years ago yeah 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 i mean i would like a footpath everywhere but that's not right, necessary but, you know but that wasn't necessarily what we were like focusing on i mean we and, had very specific yeah, and you're saying you're saying that we what you were focusing on was a neighborhood connectivity and b what was also yeah. the infrastructure and the density okay okay because the, i guess the third thing that um occurs to me is um you know guilford calls them assets but um you know like not being able to walk or bike to the entrance of um you know um the Holyoke Range State Park, I think is a problem. So, um, and I'm 
I think Chris Brestrup said that there is some plan to create an access point off of a new development down there. But I guess that's the other piece is it, even if it is for recreation, if we're offering recreational opportunities for people, I think we need to be thinking about public transit or I, uh, alternative transportation um, access to those assets. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the idea, right, the idea with these maps was to, to look at the notes. I mean, there's a student helping if anybody else wanted to help too, but to look at the notes and to suggest some updates, you know, to the data layers, including like getting rid of the totally recreational ones. And, um, and then of course, you know, we could go back and we could review it ourselves, the updates and, um, you know, and maybe we could do the pedestrian one separate from the bike one or yeah. however you want to do it. The layers are on top of each other, so <laughs> that might make sense. Um, and then also to get some public comment, you know, in case there's anything that are like missing. I mean, we uh, did get so. public comment. I mean, that was why we did Right. That. But it is so long ago now, right? Yes, like that was is. like 2017 or something. It's a 2018, 2019 plan. And 19, so... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, but, um, but at least we have a GIS layer, so that's progress. <laughs> so, yeah. And so, what are the next steps to like go back and listen to those meetings and write out what people said in meetings, or or, or even to, to yeah? I mean, we could also use these. Um, like I think you know sometimes yeah. So like this shows. Right, this shows the attributes. So somebody could actually like look at modifying. I mean, we could write it out longhand, but we could also look at like, oh, this is this link and we'd want to change it or something. Right. Like somebody could make suggested edits on the table to I think I would be useless for that kind of edit because I don't know what you're doing now. But, oh, um, but so, I could yeah. I could listen to a meeting and transcribe yeah. what's happening in the meeting. Well, Chris, I mean, so you and I had worked, you know, we had met um and with Jeremy and things. So let's have another meeting and talk about strategies. Does that sound okay. good for this now that we have the GIS layer? Yeah. That sounds good. Okay, great. Okay. Um anything else that we have to talk about? Oh, it I is seven o'clock. I think I'm we're sorry. Gilford, are you still on? Um, just follow up on the it did the engineer's report come out yet for those two intersections in front of the Fort River site? No. Oh, what about the in engineer report for the in front Henry of Cushman? Street? Yeah. Cushman, we have a draft. So what about to um sorry, George just a quick second. Um is it possible to share that, or are you keeping that in house until you get the final? Well, not. We'll go to the town manager, and then he'll decide what to do. Then, with then he can, then he'll see if we're worthy. Okay, cool. Yep. Right, and then, thanks. um, what happened with um? There were those few resident requests about, and we had talked about it too about like the school zones and school zone signs, and whether you have speed, you know, variable speed signs and things like that. Those haven't come to us yet. Oh, okay. Somebody said it went to the town manager and he was having staff look into it. Almost so. ready. I think anyway. they were requests for JCPC funding is what they were, weren't they? They did ask for JCPC funding, but then JCPC said, oh, well, you should find out what the town and the schools want. So it hasn't there's... come. I haven't seen no, You haven't no. seen anything? Okay. I know what they are, right. but I haven't been, they haven't been sent to me to say anything. Oh, okay, yeah. All right. Okay, well, hopefully, I think JCPC was going to decide. They had a meeting today right before TAC, so I couldn't do both, but it, I'd really like to have it, some kind of school zone signs with the middle school and high school so we can actually have, like, speed limit and speed limit enforcement there. Like, that's a priority for me. So, okay. Does anybody have anything else? Oh, and I did have on the agenda tax role in exploring the creation of the Transportation Commission. So I had been in touch with the town manager on this, but he and I haven't talked for, I don't know, a couple of months probably now. 
Um, and it, so it seems like it's going slow, but um, he was originally going to send a report back to the council, I think, by before the end of the year. And, you know, we're already pretty far past that. So I'm going to reach out to him and see about getting it like back moving forward because I mean, he and I had initial discussions about it almost two years ago now. So it's one of these things that just is taking a long time. So, all right. Anything else? Anybody? One more. Thank you. Oh, and Thank Chris, you. did you have any safe moves to school? It's Wednesday, May 1st, Guilford. I'm getting you. I'm getting you on a bike. <laughs> I think he's got to do. Gilford. He's got to be. He's got to be doing paving that day or something. So, no, if, if you okay, do get him on a bike, put it on the gazette. Yeah, I think I'm going go skiing that day. Oh, <laughs> I think. Come on, you, you, and the town manager and the superintendent. You guys could all be biking together. That would be so. No. Uh, <laughs> Run skiing. Gilford, you're worse than my kids. <laughs> Come on, Marcus. Are you gonna do it? Are you gonna do it with your kids? Uh, I mean, uh, depends. <laughs> your kids Maybe. Have we had the perfect Wildwood. weather last time. Right? Uh, Wildwood. Oh, Wildwood. Yeah, so yeah. The, hopefully. The yeah. Valley Point is. Um, I think it's the North Amherst Fire Station, or it might be the. Pine oh, if it's North Amherst Fire Station, yeah, maybe that's on the way to school. Yeah. And they got and a the police escort escorted. last time. Yeah. And the police escort from Cushman down northeast to Fort River and from uh, down east Pleasant. And Kim, what, cool. do you, what do you think? Can we get any high school kids interested oh, involved? Or... Yeah. Oh, I thought you could. Sorry, Kim. I shouldn't laugh. But... <laughs> well, she offered last time. Yeah, no, no, I, I think but... you can. Actually, I have the, um, I think the um, president of the Environmental <laughs> Club is about to have dinner. <laughs> Is my daughter's boyfriend and is oh, about to have well, dinner. Then, We're about yeah. to have dinner. <laughs> withhold, so I can... what? withhold food until commitment yeah, is yeah, made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We just got oh, to get them to not drive What's to school. What's the date again? May 1st. Okay. So uh, Chris and I received materials from the Safe Routes to School Coordinator. Did you forward any of that to Kim? I can forward it after this meeting. No, don't forward any materials. Okay, um, don't forward. Okay. Yeah, no, no material. So Debbie Westmoreland has to sign off on everything. And she, uh -huh. what she sends out in the superintendent's email on Friday is then what we will all be using. And I'm, I'm not really letting anybody use anything. Different. Okay. Oh, but I just meant for the high school, like environmental club or anything. No, they can't. The club. Oh, can't do yeah, I mean, go just look up safe routes to school May first. You can read yeah, all. Yeah, got it. Okay, I'll all do right. that right now. Okay, because I all have right. to. Go okay. Dinner. Thank you, guys. Bye. I know we all have to go. Hey, all right, guys. Thank you, thank way, you Kim, uh, for... My oh. my daughter keeps going on and on about patches. Your cat. Oh yeah. She doesn't stop. <laughs> oh. She's so cute. With right. She's yeah. so adorable. Are we we gonna go into a um a cat war? Because mine's sitting right here, but my phone. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, use but I didn't mean to make that comment in front of another cat. I apologize. Yeah, right. And I got a puppy. I have a puppy. All right. Anyway, no, okay, it's no, not the same. next meeting. Okay, All right. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.